Hey, it's Phil here from Art Tutor, and welcome to the next lesson in this art isolation series, lesson number two. If you missed the first lesson and uh, the intro to that, I'm attempting to film some lessons here from home uh, during the coronavirus quarantine. I'm going to be covering lots of different subjects and mediums, pencil drawing, ink, charcoal, pastels, colour pencils, a bit of watercolour as well. In this lesson, I'm going to be covering basic drawing skills, and we'll be doing this tortoise in pencil initially, and then charcoal. The theme for day three of the Art Isolation Challenge is time, and I believe, I'm led to believe by Google anyway, that the oldest living land animal is a tortoise, so hence that uh, tenuous link. You'll find the reference photographs for this one beneath the video, or if you're watching this on Facebook, you'll find it, a link to them within the post. Always grateful for your feedback and comments, and uh, if you're watching this circa kind of April, May 2020, please do feel free to make a request for future lessons. I'm aiming to do one a week, uh, so long as we're all in this uh, lockdown. Okay, so for this lesson, the first half is going to be, as I say, a drawing lesson. It's going to be aimed at newcomers, anyone that struggles with kind of basic drawing and proportion. So even if you don't have charcoal pencils, um, which is what I'll be using for the second half of the lesson, please still have a go at the drawing out stage. The method and the techniques that I take you through can be applied to all kinds of subject matter. If you're going to follow along in full, great. Let's go and take a look at the materials that you'll need. Materials then. I'm going to give you two different options, very similar but slightly different. The first option, and the one that I'm going to be using for the majority of this lesson, is to work on a tan coloured piece of paper. So this one's by Strathmore. Brand isn't doesn't really matter as long as it's a drawing paper or even a pastel paper would be fine as well. Tan colour. And then I've got a sanguine pencil. This one's by Conte A. Parry. And I've got a black charcoal pencil. This one's a Wolf's Carbon pencil. General pencils make a good charcoal pencil, so the Conte A Paris as well. And then I've got this little teeny tiny white charcoal pencil. I think that one's by Derwent. It's all I've got left. I really uh, need to order myself some more. So I've got those three pencils on the tan paper. And the way it works is that the black pencil, used with quite a bit of pressure, acts as your strongest darks for the shadow areas. The sanguine or tan coloured pencil acts as the mid-tones and obviously I can use that with more or less pressure to create different levels of mid-tones. And then the white pencil obviously is for the highlights, the brightest parts. Now what the tan paper colour or any mid-tone uh, paper will do is it unifies everything. So it acts as another underlying mid-tone. If I show you on a white piece of paper, if I want to work quite quickly, kind of a, a sketchy feel, and I put some of the charcoal down. So I'm going for a, quite a quick and a loose sketchy feel. I've got these little bits of white paper showing through, the white paper surface showing through where I've not covered it. And because those bits showing through are white, they effectively act as highlights. So I can't put a white highlight at any point. You know, obviously I can't work a white pencil onto a white surface, but I can't put it at any point in and around here that's going to make it look any different from the white bits of paper that's showing through. And this is why very often working on a white ground requires a bit more time so that you can fill in all of the paper surface in order to allow the lighter areas to show through where you want them to show through. But look what happens on a, on a tone ground. Any paper surface that's showing through between my marks, let's just do a slightly bigger one here. So any of this paper surface that's showing through is a lot more subtle. So when I come to place highlights somewhere else within the drawing, you know, whether it's in this area or just somewhere else, there's an obvious difference between how light this is and how light this is. And this, in a nutshell, is why working on a toned ground is easier, it's quicker, and it's why every artist, in my opinion, at every level, should definitely own some coloured paper. Now the alternative for the materials, very similar but slightly different, is to... Leave out the tan paper and use a grey paper instead. Maybe you've got some of that, but you don't have the tan paper. And then what you would do is you'd drop the sanguine pencil and just use the black and the white. And effectively, you're going to use the black with lots of pressure as you would do previously for your darkest areas of shadow. And just with a little bit less pressure where you want a mid-tone and less pressure again for a lighter mid-tone. And this, or these mid-tones here, are replacing what you would use the tan pencil for. So the techniques that I'm gonna take you through shortly are exactly the same. 
If you don't own any charcoal pencils, especially uh, a black and a white one, go and get some, like today. If you're in any way interested in making art, and presumably you must be, you know, if you're watching this, these should be a staple in your materials box. Charcoal pencils and a coloured ground is an absolute essential, in my opinion. Doesn't matter what level you're at, doesn't matter what mediums you prefer to uh, draw a paint with, get some of these because you can make some really cracking images in a relatively short period of time. So go and jump on Amazon or whatever online store that you uh, that you like to purchase from. Order some charcoal pencils, even if it's going to take a week or 10 days, you know, with the current climate to arrive. Order them today. They're not expensive and you will use them. Okay, so the only other materials that you're going to need are a regular graphite pencil just to do some drawing uh, exercises that we're going to do in a moment. And then an eraser, kneadable eraser preferably. This is another essential, another staple that should be in every artist's toolbox. And then you need a way to sharpen your uh, charcoal pencils. Do not use a sharpener of any description. You know, electric, mechanical, little handheld one, absolutely no good for charcoal pencils. What you're going to need is a craft knife and ideally some sandpaper. So this is a little sand sanding block that we've got. I actually got my dad to make a thousand of these uh, a couple of years ago uh, when we were selling some art materials and uh, we couldn't really get any online. So we made these by hand. Really, really simple. You don't have to be, it doesn't have to be as fancy as this. You can just literally get a piece of sandpaper, fold it over, uh, maybe fold it around a little bit of wood if you've got that, but that doesn't matter. You know, you can literally just fold it over. And then a quick tip for sharpening your pencils. I know you probably don't feel like you need a tip on how to sharpen a pencil, but this has helped me. When you remove the wood casing from the outside, this is definitely a case of less haste, more speed. So you want to go in at a shallower angle than what you might think. It's quite easy to get a little bit overzealous and to dig the blade in a little bit too steeply just because you want to expose some of the charcoal here quite quickly. But what always ends up happening is the blade digs into the pencil and it breaks. It digs into the pigment and it breaks and it makes you really, really angry. I don't know why far angrier than it should do for a pencil. Uh, or maybe that's just me and probably need to get out a bit more. So nice shallow angle, take your time. And then when you've got, uh, what's that? Say about half an inch of the nib exposed, get your sanding block or your bit of sandpaper and just roll the pencil round and about a minute or so, it'll get to a nice sharp point. As sharp as you want it, you know, longer will obviously get it to a sharper point. And when you come to do your white charcoal pencil, just do that on a separate side, on a different bit, just so it doesn't pick up any of the pigment there. All right, so let's have a little look at drawing this thing out. So let's take a look then at drawing this tortoise out. So I'm going to try and add a few little drawing tips where I can uh, to each of these lessons. It won't be for all of them, um, but I think this is a good one to give you a few useful tips that hopefully you can apply to other subjects as well. This is definitely a step up from the line wedge, if you followed along with the drawing out of that lesson. But it, it's still definitely achievable, even for newcomers, especially with the process that I'm going to take you through. Now... And this is for, you know, the newcomers or people who are maybe not particularly confident with their, with their drawing abilities. What we're going to do is use a crosshair. So it's kind of like a, a very simplified grid. So we're going to draw a vertical line to split the page in two that way. And then we're going to do a horizontal line to split the page in two that way. And you can use a ruler for this. Uh, just draw your lines quite lightly. I'm using this white piece of paper, by the way, just because... Uh, it'll show up a little bit easier for you on camera. So obviously I will be doing this on the tan paper um, when I actually come to draw it out for real. If you're a bit more confident with your drawing abilities, or if you just like to live life on the edge, you could leave this crosshair out. But if you're like me and you're going to play it safe, grab yourself a ruler and we're going to split it in two. Before you go ahead, by the way, and measure the distance with your ruler, you know, to get the centre this way and the centre here, just have a go at trying to judge that by eye. So just make a little mark wherever you think. I'm going to say somewhere around there and somewhere, somewhere say around there, it's probably a bit high up, somewhere around there. Just have a little go and then measure and see how far away you were. Being able to judge distances is a skill that you need to develop. If you want to be able to draw from observation and by eye. And it's a skill that nobody ever talks about, you know, and yet 
It's a skill that all good artists have developed, this ability to gauge size and distance. And simple little things like this is how you practice it. So try and judge the halfway point across, try and judge it going down just by putting these little marks in, and then use your ruler to check. Now what I've done is created a reference photo with this crosshair already superimposed over the top. So you can copy along from that, you can work from that one. Uh, just have a look below the video, the notes there to download that reference photograph. And there's one without it as well, for those that are uh, feeling a little bit more adventurous. All right, so I'm gonna put my crosshair in freehand. You can use a ruler. And now what we want to do is look for the big basic shapes, okay? So if you remember from the Lime lesson, if you watched that one, or if you've seen any of my other drawing lessons, what I very often talk about is how uh, the average person who doesn't make any art, who is a non-artist, when they try to draw something out, they will start at one point and they'll draw very carefully all the way around the perimeter, trying to follow all the undulations and the lines until they get all the way back around to the beginning or some kind of process to that effect. The problem with that is your proportions will just be completely off. Really, really difficult to draw with good proportion using that approach. What we want to do instead is look at big basic shapes, very, very simple shapes, and compare the sizes of those and the positions of those to one another because they're much easier to compare to one another. So I'm going to start with the tortoise's head. And if you look at the crosshair, you can see that the position of it is roughly around here, but also the size of it comparative to the quadrant is something that we want to think about as well. So it's not this big, is it? And it's not this big. It's roughly this sort of size here. And then again, if you saw that last lesson with the lime, I talked quite a lot about converting curved edges into straight edges. So even at this point, we could put in some straight lines, some simple straight lines, for the tortoise's head. So it's got this nice, quite, a, quite an obvious flat edge for the head there, and then for the front. So now let's carry that on into the body. So if I look at this sort of line and angle here, what I can do now is look at this shape, this triangular shape, and how does that compare roughly to the shape that's made on my reference? So this is an abstract shape. It's a lot easier for you to judge that because your brain isn't trying to think about a tortoise or anything, any of the symbols that it's got planted in its head from, you know, way back when we were children. It's just looking at it in an abstract triangular shape. And that's quite easy to judge in terms of its size and its position. Same here, I can look at the angle, the way that this line splits and this splits the crosshair and this shape that it creates. And now we can look at some other big shapes. So let's have a look at this leg here. Whereabouts in this quadrant does the leg appear? It's not over here and it's not over here. It's roughly in the middle. But what's its size as well? So if I create this very, very simple oval shape and then I can just extend it maybe with a bit of a square there. But it's roughly about that size, isn't it? And then I can do the same for this leg here. Before I draw this in though, what I'm gonna do is give myself another little reference point. So if I draw a line vertically down, just roughly, and I can just do this by eye, so you don't need to draw this in. If I take a plumb line all the way down, if I do that on the reference photograph, can you see how the leg, the edge of the leg is actually here? So that gives me a nice little kind of marker in order to then make this kind of big oval shape for the leg. All right, so you can see how rough and ready it is. That's all we need at this stage. Now let's take a look at the shell. So the shell, I just want as a series of simple straight lines. So again, look at this shape here, the way that it's made with the crosshair. Look how this shape, this small slither of a triangle is created. And then I'm gonna take this through the, uh, the tortoise's head. I'm gonna look at that shape that's created and then this shape here that's created. So it's looking a bit of a mess. Don't worry about that. We can erase this back and I'm, I'm doing this heavier than what you need. You can do it at home. I'm just doing it a little bit heavier so it shows up. So let's just carry that on now. What about 
this shape up here, so or this line up here. So I'm going to again take it through the turtle's face, the tortoise. So it's probably a little bit further up here, isn't it? Okay, so just looking at that shape that's made, it's a little bit further up here, which tells me this might need to be a little bit longer. You're just putting these initial very rough marks down and you must be willing to erase them. Okay, good artists erase. It's newcomer artists that are, you know, afraid of erasing that think they have to make all their marks perfectly first time. That's not the case at all. Good artists, professional artists erase their marks and they're more willing to erase them early on. Now, in terms of the markings on the shell, take the same approach. So don't get lazy here and start trying to draw these in carefully. We've got this big circular one here. Okay, and if I take the edge of this, roughly, if I bring a plumb line down, look how it intersects this leg here. So this is what I'm looking at when I look at the reference. No, I wouldn't put this mark in ordinarily on the, on the paper, and you don't need to too, but this is what I'm looking at. And then we've got this more of a kind of a square or a flattened hexagonal shape. And now look at the way this line, where does it intersect the, t the tortoise's head? It's not here, is it? It's about here. So it's just before the crosshair line. So that means I can take that further across there. And will it matter? Absolutely not. For a pattern on a shell, will it matter? No. But this is about understanding the method of observation because for a lot of subjects, it absolutely will matter. If you ever want to draw portraits or the human figure or even something like an animal, um, many still life compositions as well, you can't afford to be this sloppy. You certainly can't with uh, portraits and figures. You've got to see where different landmarks fall and relate to other landmarks within your drawing. And they've got to be really quite accurate for, for some subject matter. So something like this is really good practice to do that. A little mark up here, and then I can take this through to here. This shell comes up here. You can see just how loosely and quite carefree I'm being. Turn that into a flat line. There we go. And this is all going to be on the sort of the outside and the periphery of the of the drawing, so it doesn't really matter. But these bits up here, I'm going to leave. I've got a little mark there. Okay, and just this last bit round here. So this is roughly about here. Okay. Now I appreciate that looks a mess, okay? But that is exactly how you want to go about creating your the structure of your drawings. If you want to get things in good proportion and you want to have this solid kind of foundation, whether you're going to paint or use a, a colored medium, whatever it may be, this is the way that you want to approach your drawings. And you will have more marks as a newcomer because all the thought processes, you want to put them down onto paper because that way they become more concrete and they're just easier to follow along with. As you get more comfortable with this method and this process, you don't need to put half of these marks down. You know, I don't need to put these down on the paper, half of the marks that I've put there, but I'm still thinking about them. I'm, this is still what I'm observing. So let's just erase some of the extraneous marks out of there. Tidy it up a little bit. All right, so that's gonna be quite faint for you, probably looking at this uh, on your monitor or on your phone, but this is easily visible enough, you know, when you're looking at it in, in real life. And what I can do now that I'm happy with the basic proportions, and you know, you can take another little look over them, step back and just check that your overall positions relative to other things are okay. What I can do now, much more easily, is start to refine the shapes. So again, I'm gonna go a little bit heavier than what I would do normally. And I want you to still think about, um, you know, retaining some of the straight edges. Spoke a lot about straight edges in the, the line lesson. It's something I've talked a lot about before in the past. Straight edges are just a lot easier to see and to judge than curves. So this shape here, I'm just trying to create and look at that as a shape. You see that shape there? Rather than as just an outside line. And then the placement of the eye. Let's just create what I think would be the, the sort of shadow area rather than the intricate details of the eye. The nose and nostrils are going to be somewhere around there. And you can get, if you're happy with that, you can get a little bit more detailed and intricate with the eye. But the, the process that you should be thinking about is starting very general 
and very uh, basic and gradually getting more detailed. So just keep resisting that urge to put in all the, the real small kind of undulations and curves and details right until the very end. And then we've got the tortoise's chin, which sort of curves that way. And then again, if you're not too sure, put it in as a straight line. And we've got the big front leg here. This all gets lost in shadow here, so I'm not too worried about putting this, this bottom line in. So just looking at the distance between there and there for the top of the leg. Let's put this in as a straight angle here. Straight angle. That's quite a straight line there. So again, even with this shape now that I'm refining it, I'm not going around a perimeter. I'm building one side and another side. I'm trying to look at sections as well. So look at this section here. So this curve on the reference photograph, see where it's obviously where the joint is. I don't know if it's an ankle joint or a knee joint, but where is this in relation to this line? This is a landmark that I can compare it to, and it's just ever so slightly below. So we can put that in. Okay. And then what about this big crease in the tortoise's neck? Where is that in relation to this leg here? It's not down here, it's not up here. It's around about where this little bit sticks out, comes in around here. And again, it isn't gonna matter if you put it in the wrong place, not on a subject like this, because there's, you know, there's an infinite number of variations that you can get within an animal or any kind of organic uh, subject matter. But it's really good practice because, as I say, for those other subjects, figures, portraits, it really is going to matter. And then we've got the shell. And just put this top edge in. Ghost the pencil across just to get a bit more of a believable line that crops out the other side. You can do that for this side as well. So you can ghost the pencil across and I think that meets up quite well. And then you can put this shape back in really, really quickly. This is gonna be a loose study when I put the charcoal in. So I can put these lines in now quite, uh, quite freely. Little point on that, it's a small point, but I think it's worth noting. So this is obviously the center. This is a, like a spiral pattern. And this is obviously the, a centerpiece that's a bit more obvious, a little bit of shadow there. And it can be quite easy for you to just get a little bit lazy with your observation and put this centerpiece here in the center of the shape. But because of perspective, because this is angled away from us slightly, the centerpiece appears further towards this side than this side. So you see how there's more space there than there. And this is called, this is an example of foreshortening and perspective. It's little observations like that that you know add up cumulatively to create something that is more or less believable. And even when it's a loose study, little observations like this are important. All right, so I hope you'll follow along with this rather than just reaching for a piece of tracing paper or putting your reference up against the window and, and kind of tracing through it that way. Try and draw it from observation. And my suggestion to you would be, why not have a go at drawing this out on a piece of scrap paper? It could be printer paper or copier paper, just a plain white piece of paper. And if you're happy with it, then you can trace that drawing onto your uh, tan paper. What it will allow you to do if you do draw it onto a piece of uh, drawing paper, white drawing paper, is to convert this into a tonal sketch. So where we look at some of the major lights and darks. Because if you do that, it's a very, very quick process that I'm going to show you now. If you do that, it will, in your mind, get you to think about where are the major shadows and highlights and stop you from getting caught up too much with all of the intricate detail. Because there is a lot of detail on this. There's a lot of texture, the scales, the wrinkles, and it can be a little bit overwhelming. And it's easy to forget about the underlying form and get caught up with those details. So all I want you to do is just with a, a reasonably soft pencil, this is a what to be, is just start shading in very, very quickly the areas that are darkest. So this is an easy one, as is under here. 
because it's all completely in shadow. So get it nice and dark. I'm using the side of the pencil, by the way. You can see that just for speed. That's called an overhand grip. This is your pen writing grip. That's an overhand grip, and it's just quicker to work with. This here is not completely white, but it's quite a light value. And then under the tortoise's chin and face, if you defocus your eyes, screw them up, like you're squinting down, what you'll find is a shape, something like that, is in shadow. So you've got this light area on the top and around here, a little bit of shadow where there's a kind of a dimple, but this area here is in shadow. And then you've got a real nice strong shadow under and around the mouth. Obviously the eye is quite dark. And this whole area up to this crease here is dark. So putting this in really, really quickly. And this is for no other purpose than to get clear in your mind where the lights and the darks are. And it's a bit dark around here, dark around here, darker under here, really dark here, all goes into the leg. And then just look at this shape here. So can you see that? So this is in shadow. And obviously there's a gradual transition. It's not just a, sh a sharp, harsh line. But for the purposes of this, we can just put it in really, really quickly. And then look, real nice, strong, dark to separate this shape and this shape. This is quite a, a light value overall. It's a right view, again, defocus your eyes. It's about the same as the shell. It's a little bit dark around this side. This is quite dark. This is jet black. There's a couple of highlights in there, but I'm not going to worry too much about those. And defocus your eyes again. Can you see how this area here all gets lost almost into one? When you defocus your eyes and blur them, all of that gets lost into one. Really dark under the chin. Okay, so very, very quick, very, very rough and ready. But what that does is allows you to see the major blocks of light and shadow. And you can keep that to one side as you go through your as you go through your charcoal drawing. That's going to have a little bit more, obviously a bit more time spent on it than that, a little bit more detail. But as long as you've got this map of lights and shadows to one side, that's really, really going to help you. Here's my drawing then onto the tan paper. Same process as before. And I've just put in a few extra indications just of the major creases. That's just going to help me keep my bearings as we're working through some of the detail later on. So the first step we're going to take shading in is to start blocking in some of the major shadow areas. So if you did that little tonal sketch, I've got mine to hand here. If you did one, keep that to hand as well, because we're going to use that as a broad map of where all the major shadow areas are. Now, as I said, I'm going to be doing this with a tan pencil and the black and the white. If you're following along with just the black and the white charcoal pencil, uh, and maybe on a grey paper, then just use your black pencil whenever I'm using the tan. And the first thing we're going to do is start to block in these shadow areas. So I think it's always good to start with the most obvious ones first, because like a jigsaw, if you can put in those the straight edges and the corners, the most obvious ones, you've got then something to work from with the other pieces. So this area is nice and dark around here. So just blocking it in really quickly. And I'm using maybe 70, 80% pressure here. So I'm trying to get quite a bit of tone down. If you're using the black, you can go a little bit uh, lighter, but less pressure. Because obviously that's a, a darker value, a darker tone. Let's just put this in really quickly around here. And then we've got some nice, real strong darks down under the shadow underneath the tortoise's belly. A 
little bit lighter pressure there, so it's not quite as dark, is it? This area is dark in here. So hopefully you can see, I'm not worried about detail. I'm putting in the tone quite quickly. All I'm trying to do is get rid of the paper surface as quickly as possible where I can. Under his chin there is quite dark. This area under the mouth is quite dark. And then if you remember from the tonal sketch section, if you defocus your eyes, all of this is in shadow, the eyes in shadow. So I'm just using a bit lighter pressure here because it's not as strong a dark as it is. You know, this area, for example, is really dark. This is really dark. These are going to be our strongest darks around here, our strongest shadow areas. As I get to the periphery as well, by the way, I'm just becoming a little bit looser and sketchy, a bit more carefree. So I want most of my detail that I'm going to be doing on this drawing to be around the focal point. And then as I, as I move away from the edges of that focal point, we're going to become looser, sketchier, a little bit quicker with the mark making, a bit more carefree. Hopefully you can see then that was very quick, uh, quite carefree, just looking at blocking in the major shadow shapes. Not worried about any detail like scales on legs, the wrinkles and creases on the neck, all the texture that's within the face, that comes last. The beauty about using a white charcoal pencil is that we can add highlights at the end. You know, you can't always do that with a if you're working with graphite because it's quite difficult to erase them, uh, even with a you know a needable eraser that you, you can get to a point. So you do have to reserve some of the white paper to show through. And you have to think about that at the start. But with this particular drawing style and this medium, you're able to block things in very quickly and then look at the highlights towards the end. So I'm just going to take a finger, a little finger, and just work that charcoal, that sanguine, into the paper surface just to create a bit of a, a smokier, sketchier feel. And one of the things as well I want you to think about, and this is a, a mental thing more than anything else, is to deliberately break your line. So with your, with your shading and your sketching, and with this smudging with your finger, break the lines that you've made. Because the mentality of that is that you get away from being really neat and tidy and precise. We're going for quite a loose and sketchy style, but more importantly than that, again, it stops you obsessing over detail. Okay, so now let's go in with some stronger darks. So I'm going to pick out these areas around here under the shell to the left hand side, this one here, maybe some darks under here. If you're just using this black charcoal pencil and you've not got the sanguine, this is where you would start to use as much pressure as you feel you can use without breaking uh, the tip of the pencil. And that will happen invariably, don't worry about that. This layer here, if you were just using black, would be with, say, 60-70% pressure just to block that in quite quickly. And now as we refine some of these darker darks, if you're just using the black, you're going to use 90-100% pressure. And that's what we're going to be using now on top of the sanguine. So again, look at your most obvious shapes first. So this one is quite dark. And don't worry about completely um, getting rid of all the paper surface or the, or the sanguine underneath. Because we want to let a little bit of that show through. That's going to be a nice bit of texture and interest. So I've just used hatching marks. You can see diagonal hatching marks. That's just a style that I tend to lean towards. It doesn't really matter what that might be for you. You could use horizontal or vertical ones. So I'm just still trying to define this edge here. And if you notice, I'm just going over with an extra layer so that this bit is darker than this bit. So this is just a little bit of cross hatching. Marks in that direction, marks in that direction, but just in this corner, just to really lift and define this shape from these. Just going to redefine this shape. I've lost that edge a little bit. And then let's put some nice strong darks in here. So mark making is quite quick. I'm not trying to be really neat and tidy. As I get to this left edge, I'm going to get really loose and carefree and just see a bit of the uh, tortoise's leg that goes into that bit there. And then we've got some nice strong dark shadow that defines this front leg. Let's put a little bit of strong dark just around this edge as well.
Okay, and then same again. So I want to really strengthen this edge. So I'm just using as much pressure as I can just to create the edge of the shape. And then I can just do an extra layer, maybe a bit of cross hatching as well in the other direction, just where the dark is at its strongest. And then our other really, really strong dark area is just underneath the, the belly of the tortoise. So I'm gonna start up here, just some hatching marks. Lines a bit further away from each other. I can always go closer together to bring the value up. And then I'm just gonna try and define that bottom edge. What we've got at this stage then is our strongest darks in. We've started to map out some of the shadow areas. So what I'm gonna do now then is start to refine some of the shadow shapes. So when I talk about working in a little bit more detail at this stage, this early stage, I'm not talking about you know, putting the eye in perfectly with intricate detail and the nostrils and the mouth and all the features. No, I wanna put in the shadow shapes, but just refine the edges and the shape of those a little bit more carefully. So if we look at this one around here, I'm using smaller movements now, and I'm just defocusing my eyes, and I'm looking for the block of shadow and its shape around here. And then I'm gonna take this out, keep your eyes defocused, squint them down. I can see there's like a little dimple, little dimple there. And then this eye, this whole eye socket is a bit darker. Uh, this is where your drawing skills come in because even if you trace, you know, you trace this image because you think I don't need to learn how to draw because I can just chase, trace things and I can shade. Well, when you shade, you lose your drawing underneath. So if you're not able to re-observe shapes and details within your drawing as you go along, tracing really doesn't help you. And that's why it's so important to learn how to draw basic drawing skills and how to observe. So again, the focus in my eyes, looking at this shadow that comes in here, all of this here, if I really squint my eyes down, the only light bit I can see is really around here, and it's nowhere near as light, compare it to the lights on here, it's nowhere near as light, so all of this really needs to be darker. I've got a nice highlight edge there, so I can maybe leave some of the paper surface there. But again, squint your eyes down. I've got a bit of a shape I can see here. Bit of a shadow shape there. There's a, bit, a little bit of a shadow for the crease in the neck. I wanna leave this area here, because this is quite light, isn't it? It's a, a highlight area. And what about on this leg? So if we look, again, defocus your eyes, I'll probably keep coming back to that and you get sick of me uh, saying it, but if you squint down, you'll see that the lightest area is in the center there. And just on the outer edges, there's a bit of shadow. So I'm just taking the pencil from this edge and lifting off, lifting off around this shape as well. It's a nice bit of shadow just in here, the crease in the ankle or knee joint, whichever it is. And then I've got the same on this side. So starting at this edge and lifting off. And then we can do the same maybe over this shadow shape here. So we've got this top edge, which is relatively light, particularly this area here. Can you see that, how that's quite light? Again, you'll see that easily if you squint your eyes down. This here is, is dark, but I'm just taking the pencil from here and lifting off. Now, if you've got a kneadable eraser, which if you haven't, go and get one. If you've got a kneadable eraser, just tease a little bit off and we're just gonna roll that to get a nice point. And then what you can start to do is just pick out, just by dabbing, some little details, some areas that are a little bit lighter. If you keep your charcoal 
uh, pencil to hand as well you can just pick out little areas of light just to help create a bit more definition and interest within the focal point so I can see there's a little light area there and this area is quite dark I can use a bit more pressure here we're obviously going to go in with the black to strengthen that but that area is a little bit lighter there same around here all under the eyes a bit lighter so we'll just remove some of that tone and just take a little bit up into there I want to lose this pencil mark you see that drawing out that I've done there because it's a highlight edge I don't want to see a strong graphite pencil mark so I'm just going to erase that back if you don't have a kneadable eraser you can cut a little slither off of a regular plastic vinyl eraser that will work as well the kneadable eraser just gives you a bit more control and then let's just do a little bit into the neck area as well so you want to push some of the uh, charcoal into the paper and that way it's just a little bit easier to lift areas out and what this won't get you back to the paper surface the needed eraser you can see how small that bit is as well that i'm using it won't get you back to the paper surface but you don't want that you just want some subtlety within uh within these shapes because the white hat the white pencil within here would be too strong be too strong a highlight you want your white pencil for your brightest highlights around here some on the leg some on the shell as well So let's just do a bit of work on the shell. So as I've said, I want this to be the focal point and as we move away, I want things to, in like a kind of a reverse vignette sort of fashion, I want things to get softer and lighter and uh, looser. So rather than block all of this in tone, what I'm gonna try and do now is start putting in some of the sort of patterns that I can see. So this has got this spiral pattern and I'm just making a very loose and uh, almost a token attempt at creating some of those patterns so it's a little bit darker here a bit more pressure same for this one See how I'm holding the pencil there as I move further away? Less control than this grip. So this is the overhand grip right down the end of the pencil. And that forces me to use the pencil quite loosely. I've got you know a lot less control over that. And there's a nice little bit, I don't know if you can see that on the reference photo, there's a nice little kind of dark area. So that's a good opportunity to help us define this edge without having to draw it in with a harsh line. So that's just a, a, anytime you can find a dark against the light, always get that in. All right, now going back to the black, we can start to put in a little bit more detail now. So I'm just going to look at this mouth shape, and obviously there's this is a darker line, there's shadow under here. So I'm just looking at my reference, making sure that I put that shape in. I'm not just lazily putting that in, you know, as as a, what I think it would look like. I'm trying to observe that. This nice dark area under here, this shadow area just under the mouth. And then look how dark it is under the chin area. It's really dark under here. So we put a nice bit of shadow in. And this shape and this shape almost get lost. Again, if you defocus your eyes, they almost blend into one. Certainly this area up here is almost as dark as this one. Just starting to look at some of the areas of creases now. This dark shape here, see this like little triangular shape? And then I put that in and then I just take some charcoal away from it with hatching marks just taking it away lifting off ever so slightly so I'm just trying to get my bearings here there's a little crease that I can see there's a bit of a lighter area there and then coming away from that is this nice strong dark shadow so just define the outer edge 
hatching marks again. And so consistently where you see these creases, you've got this highlight edge and then you've got a shadow area and it's darkest just right next to the highlight edge and then it lightens off, softens off slightly. So what I do is I put this tone in here and then I go back over just this little edge just to strengthen next to this edge here. If you're ever doing a kind of a material study clothing, this is how all creases are. You've got the light highlight edge, light highlight edge then a dark shadow that gently softens off. Okay, let's do a little bit of work around the face then. So I'm gonna look for any obvious details. We've got the nostrils, let's get those in. They're nice and strong. Just this very outer edge. If you look carefully at the reference, it is quite a dark outer edge. So I'm gonna put a thin line in for that, but not all the way around. And let's do a little bit of work on the eye. Got this kind of angry look to him, with the uh, furrowed eyebrow. So I've got this shadow underneath that I can see. Put that in a bit stronger. Don't forget to defocus your eyes. So around here, it's quite easy to get caught up in all the detail. If you defocus your eyes, what you'll see is this is quite a big shape. And we can put a few little dots of uh, highlight in just to break that up a little bit, but you wanna get the big major shadow shape in first. All right, let's switch to the white pencil. So we haven't done any on that yet. And I wanna look for the lightest areas. And again, just wanna block those in. Not too worried about detail. And don't go overboard with this. So you only want the lightest edges. So you don't want this whole area. There's gonna be a transition where this is the lightest, gonna be a little bit less light here, and then it fades into the dark. So I'm just gonna pick out the areas that I think are the lightest, where it's really, really light little piece there be on the top of the nose I can use as much pressure as possible and where it's less light you use less pressure so this area here is not as light as it is this bit so I don't want to go overboard just a little touch here and there a little bit down the middle just down the middle and this shell is quite white as well we can also put in any kind of strong white lines around the pattern of the shell What about some of these little uh, creases? Some of these have got definite highlights on, especially this one here. Look, this is really bright here. So I'm gonna dig the pencil in for that. area of highlight just underneath the eye again don't go overboard you probably want to sharp a pencil and I've got man this has gone really blunt now so not a lot I can do with it and those nostrils I'm not happy with so I haven't put those in the right place they need to be right on the outer edge put them too far in the middle so just using the kneadable eraser lift that out as best you can you're not going to get back to the paper surface 
and go back over with a bit of sanguine. The last stage then is to add in some details. And because we focused on the underlying form, so those big areas of shadow and the lights, we don't have to put in lots of detail. In fact, we don't want to put lots of detail in. We just want to give an impression. So just a few of the scales on the legs, just a few of the, the patterning, a little bit of the patterning on the uh, tortoise's face. So you need to go and sharpen your pencils. I've just done that. And because I'm trying to film this as quickly as possible, I broke this pencil about four times, so the air turned blue. So didn't take my own advice earlier. You want to go in less haste, more speed, go in with a shallow angle. I didn't do that, and uh, yeah, I've ended up with half the pencil that I had five minutes ago. Anyway, let's carry on. So I'm just going to give an impression of some of these little scales that are within uh, the turtle's head, tortoise's head. Keep calling it a turtle. It might be a tail. I don't know. Somebody can... Uh, Somebody who knows more about wildlife than I do can tell me. I've still got to try and respect the values though. So here, because it's a light area, I'm using really, really light pressure, just touching the pencil more than anything. But when I get into this area, I can start breaking it up with stronger pressure. And the beauty of these bits now is because that underlying form is in place, you, you can do this quite quickly. You don't have to be too careful with this area. Details don't matter. It's not the detail that makes uh, a piece of art or creates any sense of realism. It's the underlying form. And then for the scales on the legs, what I'm going to do is just look for the, the biggest ones and just look for where the shadows are. So I'm not going to draw in an entire scale. I'm just going to look for where I can see little bits of shadow. And I'm going to put these in with the sanguine pencil first. And then we'll put some in with the black and then we'll define them further with the white. But again, don't need to put in every single one, obviously, and don't go overboard. You want to put don't want to put in too many. So in this area, because it's lighter, and just want to touch the pencil in with a lot less pressure. Okay, and then let's go with the black. So going back to the tortoise's face just picking out a few little details maybe refine this eye area now that I've got a, a sharper pencil put some little creases in and wrinkles Remember this area I said was too uh, too light, so literally just taking the pencil through that shape just to darken it. Let's just do a few touches of black into the shell, but not too much because it's on the periphery. I don't want the viewer's attention drawn to that. And then let's just go in with the white, just add a few little highlights just to these center ones. Just going to put a little bit of tone just in this corner here just to help define this edge that's just going to help uh, just lift the top edge of the tortoise's head hopefully all right i think for the purposes of this i'm going to leave it at that i could go on and add more and more detail difficult knowing when to stop um, but it's, you know, this is a, a looser study. It's a lesson more than it is a piece of artwork. So I'm going to leave it at that. I hope you have a go at this one. It's been fantastic to see so many line wedges in the Facebook group uh, and on our tutor. I'd love to see lots of tortoises too. I'd be interested to see anyone who completes this in just the black and white uh, charcoal pencil on the grey paper that we mentioned earlier on in the lesson. Or even if you just follow the first half of the lesson, you know, the drawing out stage. 
and then shade and pencil or paint or whatever you want to do that would be great to see as well the next lesson we'll be using uh, watercolor with ink i'm going to do a few in that medium because i know it's a really popular one until then stay healthy and thanks for watching <laughs>